In 2006, Google acquired the very popular 3D software called SketchUp, which marked a turning point in the 3D modeling industry, good and bad at the same time. You see, prior to Google's involvement, SketchUp was a paid tool mainly used by architects and design professionals. By 2007, however, Google released Google SketchUp 6 as a free download, which is a radical move that removed the price barrier for 3D modeling software for professionals such as architects and designers. So this opened the floodgates for anyone to access and use the software that professionals use to do their work. So how did this impact how 3D companies sell their 3D software in the existence of a powerful and free software? I'm gonna give you a hint. It made a very lasting change that still exists till this day. If you use SketchUp as an engineer, architect, interior designer, or 3D artist, you know it has some limitations. There are many areas where SketchUp could be faster, smarter, and more efficient. And this is where Mindsight Studios comes in. They have developed some of the best and most powerful extensions for SketchUp, covering everything from modeling to parametric design and even sculpting. Their collection includes a dozen of extensions that will transform the way you use SketchUp. For example, Sketch Plus gives you over 40 quality of life tools that will definitely speed up everyday modeling. On the other hand, Profile Builder lets you create smart reusable assemblies like roads, fences, railings, and everything else in between. And Placemaker helps you bring real-world locations complete with terrains, buildings, and satellite imagery to your SketchUp projects. In addition to Artisan, which adds powerful subdivision modeling and organic sculpting tools, just to name a few. To check the full list of plugins, check the description down below. And by the way, if you're interested in knowing more details, we made a full video talking about each plugin in detail, which you can find in the description too. Now back to the video. So as opposed to many big companies in the creative and design software space, one of Google's first decisions was to take away the price tag from SketchUp. In 2006, weeks after the acquisition, Google launched a slimmed down SketchUp, explicitly aiming to let anyone build 3D models particularly for populating Google Earth, at no cost. This free version was an instant success. In just a few years, SketchUp's user base grew into millions worldwide. And by 2013, over 30 million people per year were using SketchUp in dozens of languages, with uses occurring at nearly 40 launches per second. Such explosive growth was fueled by countless casual users who would never have bought a professional CAD software, but eagerly downloaded SketchUp because it was free and easy to learn. The result was truly 3D for anyone, leading to widespread adoption among beginners, hobbyists, students, and creators of all kind, which as you know, is beyond the traditional professional design audience. SketchUp's free version enabled millions of new users worldwide to create 3D models, and I think this is due to its intuitive interface and push and pull modeling that let beginners visualize architecture and other designs with ease. And by the way, Blender at the time was also available as a free and open source 3D modeling software, but I'm not sure how it did in terms of actual numbers of users back then. So this mass influx of casual users meant that by the late 2000s, SketchUp wasn't just popular in architecture, it was the world's most popular 3D design tool overall, used by over 38 million users worldwide. For many of these users, Google SketchUp was their first exposure to 3D modeling. And here is the interesting thing. Some architects were initially threatened by this, fearing that it would undermine their authority. But ultimately, I think it led to a better design dialogue, meaning this free tool let clients, students, and hobbyists participate in the design conversation, which means if anyone understands how the process is done, they can communicate with professionals better, which can make the conversation really seamless. Google's ownership also guided SketchUp's feature development in ways that prioritize accessibility, but most importantly, Google's own goals, which you can even call selfish goals. You see, a major focus was integrating SketchUp with Google Earth and Maps. SketchUp gained tools to geolocate models on Earth's surface and to easily contribute models to the online 3D warehouse on Google Earth's layer of buildings. In fact, thousands of users began uploading models of local landmarks, in addition to bridges, homes, and so on, to the 3D warehouse, which could then appear in Google Earth. This approach paid off. Entire city downtowns were built in SketchUp by enthusiasts. The builder-making tool introduced in 2010 
even allowed users to assemble models from aerial photos. Thus, under Google, the SketchUp feature set grew to support casual geomodelers and map enthusiasts, rather than solely focusing on high-end modeling techniques. In addition, Google invested in some new professional features, for example, in SketchUp 6 Pro. It introduced Layout, which is a 2D documentation and presentation tool, so that architects could generate drawings from their models. However, many advanced capabilities remained available only through plugins. Long-time users observed that Google's updates throughout SketchUp 6, 7, and 8 were evolutionary, and sometimes oriented toward the broader Google ecosystem, rather than adding complex modeling operations. This led certain professionals to criticize SketchUp as being stagnant in the face of more rapidly evolving 3D CAD software. It is true that SketchUp never chased feature parity with tools like Max or Blender. For instance, even by 2012, it lacked built-in photorealistic rendering, organic sculpting, or advanced nerve surfacing. But this was by design. Google kept SketchUp simple, efficient, and focused on core modeling for concept design. So in many ways, the simplicity and clarity of purpose was kind of a strength. But not everyone liked this. By the time Google sold SketchUp in 2012, the software had a very firm niche. It was a go-to tool for concept design and basic modeling, leaving detailed documentation and highly detailed modeling to other software. SketchUp's explosion in popularity under Google did not go unnoticed by the rest of the industry. Its success helped reshape expectations for what 3D modeling software should be in terms of pricing and ease of use. First and foremost, SketchUp proved the viability of the freemium model in the design software space that we now take for granted sometimes. And it demonstrated that you could give a 3D modeling program, I mean give it away to 100 users and still make money from just one user often a professional, who opts to pay the full version. Indeed, SketchUp's user community was roughly on the order of one free users and one only paid user, which is about a 1% conversion rate. And I think this is typical in freemium software. You see, this small fraction of users that subsidizes the rest was relatively a novel approach for CAD software, and computing companies were compelled to respond by lowering barriers when it came to their products. For example, Autodesk, long accustomed to selling pricey licenses of AutoCAD and Max, introduced free hobbyist tools like 123D and later acquired the web-based Tinkercad to capture the maker audience. Tinkercad in particular emulated SketchUp's philosophy. It is extremely simple to get started with and targets a broad demographic, ranging anywhere from kids to hobbyists. In a similar way, new CloudCAD platforms, such as Onshape, launched with free plans for hobbyists purposefully to attract the kind of users that SketchUp had proven existed. Even established software began offering free educational licenses or stripped-down light versions, knowing that today's beginners, spoiled by SketchUp's free access, might simply ignore these tools that they can't afford or even understand. As a result, Google was content to let 100x more people use SketchUp for free. I think this was the first time this freemium model was used in a 3D software and impacted SketchUp's evolution in a few ways. First, it meant that SketchUp's development had to keep free users happy, just as much as paid users. And unlike a typical software company that might focus only on paying customer needs, the SketchUp team had to consider millions of hobbyists when planning features or changes. This perhaps slowed the pace of introducing purely pro features that free users didn't really care about. Instead, many improvements like better usability, performance, or better warehouse integration serve the entire user base. Second, the huge free user community became one of the greatest assets of SketchUp. These users created tutorials, answered questions in forums, developed free plugins, and fueled a self-sustaining growth cycle. In essence, the user community became a key part of the product. Google actually understood this network effect because it was used almost a billion times a year. But here is the problem. Not for Google, though. When Trimble acquired SketchUp in 2012, they inherited this massive user base but without Google's deep pockets or complementary Google Earth angle. And over time, Trimble adjusted the business model, for instance, phasing out the fully installable SketchUp Make after 2017 in favor of a web-based SketchUp Free, which lets Trimble better control updates and encourage upgrades. And since it doesn't have the deep pockets of Google, I think they are again focused on professionals while still trying to keep the free users happy. 
But the lesson here is that the industry learned that giving software away can be sometimes the fastest way to get to the top. As SketchUp became, under Google's wing, the most widely used 3D modeling software in the world. And there you have it guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to the channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.